Good evening and good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Journey series, the journey for and by entrepreneurs. Um, Indian Startups, a 90,000 plus member community, is a startup ecosystem bringing together entrepreneurs, investors, and partners to nurture and empower new and growing startups. This series provides members the opportunity to hear directly from entrepreneurs and our guests will share their entrepreneurial experiences and learnings. And each session includes a question and answer session where members can interact directly with our guests. Before I introduce our guests today, just wanted to go over some general meeting guidelines. Uh, so one, please keep yourself on mute if you're not a speaker. Two, participate, participate, participate. We encourage it, we welcome you to participate and send us your questions through the chat window. And lastly, please provide your feedback on the session towards the end through a brief survey. Uh, so on to our subject today. So how we speak matters. Strong communication skills are an essential for success. And um, our guest today is Will Greenblatt of Outloud Speakers. Will will give us tips on how to speak with confidence and communicate with impact. Will is an entrepreneur and an accomplished speaker who runs the Out Loud Speaker School, a school in Toronto, Canada. And he uses this method to help entrepreneurs and salespeople communicate more effectively. Um, and once again, we have a truly um, global program for you today. Our guest is in Canada. We have guests from Canada, parts of the US, as well as from India. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. and. Welcome, Will. Let's get started. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mandara. And thank you guys all for being here. Thank you so much for joining from wherever you are. Uh, as Mandara said, I'm in Toronto, Canada, and uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Out Loud Speaker School. And so we, we are actors teaching public speaking skills and communication. So I'm going to share with you guys my top seven pitching tips. So when you're pitching, I don't want you just to think of pitching as raising investment money, but also just the story that you are telling throughout your entrepreneur journey. And it doesn't even just have to be one venture, right? Because many entrepreneurs will start many ventures. So it's about piecing together your story throughout your entire journey as a, as a founder. And, and that's really what entrepreneurs do is we tell stories. We tell stories to investors. We tell stories to customers. We tell stories to uh, potential partners. And so that's really what I want to focus on. But I'm going to share my screen and give you guys a little bit of background about who I am and how I found my way into this and my story. And then I'll give you my tips. And then I'm going to give you guys a chance to give me a very quick elevator pitch and I will give you pitch coaching. So you can jump on and say, okay, this is what I do, and this is my title, and this is my name, and here's my idea, and then we'll get some live feedback. So I really encourage you, as, as Mandra said, to participate. So uh, I'm going to have to stop your screen sharing, I think, Mandra, if that's okay. Okay. To, to open up mine. I will stop it right now. Okay. Yes. So uh, as Mandra said, and I said, I run Out Loud Speaker School, so I'll give you a bit about me first. Can everybody see this uh, screen share? Yes, great. So this is uh, my journey to Out Loud began when I was just a kid uh, and I was an actor at the age of seven years old. And this is little me uh, at seven years old in a movie. Uh, and I did, I got into acting through my family. My father was in the business and my older sister was in the business as well. So I did a big movie right away and it kind of launched this career at the age of seven, which was really crazy. Uh, and so... So I kept doing it. I kept doing it uh, through my childhood, through high school. This was a show I did that was on uh, Canada's YTV that I was the lead in. This thought, I thought it was going to be a big deal that, of course, like many things in the business, it crashed and burned eventually. Uh, but I kept acting and I kept doing it. And I thought, okay, this is going to be my career. I'm definitely going to be an actor and that will be what I do for a living. And then I got to theater school and I thought, oh, I should go to theater school and get some real skills and talent and go take uh, some classes to make sure that I'm, you know, as good as I can be at my craft but I hated it. I hated the way that they taught us. It was so militant and harsh and strict and do what we say and don't ask any questions. And this is how you should be as an actor and don't bring your own individuality in here. And I just hated my experience there. Uh, although I learned a lot, like, like many, many things along the journey, what, what you often have a terrible time with teaches you the most. So I quit and I left and I went traveling. 
I went to Spain and I became an English teacher to pay my way, but I discovered that I love teaching. And then after Spain, I went to China and I opened up my first venture there, which was a business and ESL coaching uh, community, kind of, uh, not community, but a coaching uh, business executive company called West Group in China. And then eventually I brought that all back together and I started this company with my co-founder, Nikki, Out Loud Speaker School. So we are actors teaching communication skills. That's what we really do. We teach communication, storytelling, public speaking, which of course pitch is a big part of. So we help executives and founders and teams tell powerful stories. Why should we work with you? Why should we buy your product? Why are, is what you're doing going to make a lot of money and change the world and impact people? We've worked in Canada, US, Mexico, China with Google and uh, TD Bank and ICBC, Good Life, Walmart, a bunch of big companies. But we really love working with entrepreneurs. That's what we really love doing because entrepreneurs are uh, what we are. And, and that's really where we get the, the, the joy of working and helping an entrepreneur who's very smart at what they do, but may not have the public speaking skills and the communication skills to sell their idea. So we've worked with over 1,500 entrepreneurs. We've helped them raise over $40 million US, and we're currently doing a, a, a global accelerator program, which is teaching us a lot about marketing as well. So now what we do is we help uh, founders develop a powerful pitch over five steps. And I'm not going to get to all this today, but just know that to get to that mountaintop where you really, really are able to deliver your story confidently and at the drop of a hat, it's rehearsed, but it's fresh every time. This needs five steps. And we're going to talk about kind of the first two today, more or less. So to me, the awareness step number one all goes back to evolutionary psychology. Can anybody guess who these people are? Like when in history is this picture? Can anybody guess? I'm seeing the name Ragul. Could you guess like how long ago are these people living? Oh, maybe we don't have Ragul there. That's okay. These are ancient people, right? These are the kind of people who are living tens of thousands of years ago in small tribes. During that time, something very important happened. Well, many important things happened, but we evolved to be cooperative, communicative, storytelling animals. So we all lived together and we gave each other information and we cooperated and we helped each other and we formed societies and tribes through the power of communication and storytelling. So now today, that is the biggest driver of influence and power and societal impact is whether you can tell a good story and communicate it to people. But how do we do that better? How do we improve upon that? How do we notice who's good, who's bad, who we follow, who we don't, and get better ourselves? Well, that's where actors come in, because one of the first things they tell you to do at theater school is sit in a park or on the street or on the subway and take a notepad and watch people. What are they doing with their body and their face and their hands? What are they communicating when they speak to one another? Who's the higher person in the conversation? Do they love each other? Is it an equal relationship? Uh, when somebody's on the phone talking and they're doing this with their eyebrows and their voice is doing this, what do we get from that, uh, from those communication signals? And how can we start to interpret that and then use that to be better communicators ourselves? So the thing I always like to say is that actors are professional humans. So that's what I really want you guys to learn today be a professional human, study human behavior to make yourself a better entrepreneur. So here are my top seven pitch tips, what you can do today to get better at your pitch, which as I said, it's not just investor pitch, it's a sales pitch, it's a pitch to a talent, uh, somebody talented that you wanna work for your company. It's a pitch for a potential collaboration with another company that you guys think you could do, make a partnership and grow your audience. You always are pitching your business, so you gotta be really good at it. Number one is what I call the golden rule. Whenever you are speaking to anyone, but especially when you're pitching your business, you must make them understand and you must make them care. Those are your only two jobs. Whether your English is perfect or your pronunciation is perfect, whether your knowledge of your numbers are perfect, all the stats you have at the top of your head, that actually doesn't matter as much as just making people understand what you are saying and making them care about it. So there's many ways to do that and we'll look at some more, but just remember this golden rule and it can help you when you're feeling nervous for public speaking, like, oh my God, I have to remember all my slides, I have to remember all my information. No, you just have to make them understand you and then make them care. Every pitch always has a next step. Oh, sorry, do we have a question? 
Um, I should say too, if you uh, if you'd like to ask a question, we're going to have a Q and A Q&A afterwards, right? So everybody's able to 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 ask those questions there. Um, and Mandra, if you think uh, I should stop and and open up for any questions, please let me know. We'll, we'll please keep going. I'm monitoring the chat window, and as the questions come in, I'll get them to you after the presentation. Thank you. Uh, yes. So, and what, what I wanted to say is just remember, not every pitch is not the end of the journey with your customer or your partner or your investor. It's always for a next step. So if you don't remember to say everything, if you didn't include everything, or if you left something out, that's okay. Because all you have to do is make them understand and care enough for a next step, a coffee, a chat, a zoom thing, a further presentation. So don't worry so much and don't be so nervous. Just mm -hmm. get, make them understand and care enough for the next interaction. And it can really help when you're feeling stressed out or anxious. Uh, number two, become aware of your speech settings. So I don't know how many people love DJ music or hip hop or electronic music, but if you do, you'll be familiar with this image. It's a DJ's mixing board. What a DJ does when they have a song is they can, uh, they can adjust, making it higher or lower, a different technical aspect of the song. And when they just make one adjustment in one technical aspect, like the volume or the clarity or something, the whole song changes. You know, you can hear a song that's like, -na 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 -na, and then the DJ turns it down and you go, and everybody goes, whoa. That's what you can do with your speaking skills as well. Once you know what are the elements to be adjusted and how you can adjust them. So that's why I show it like this DJ's mixing board. I call these your speech settings. So you see we have volume and every uh, setting has a 10 and a zero. So volume 10 would be as high as you can possibly shout and zero would be the quietest whisper. And of course there's everything in between. But like the DJ, it's not fixed. You should never just say, okay, I want my volume to be a seven and I'm gonna leave it there for the entire speech. No, you wanna adjust depending on the moment. Is it a really important, exciting moment? Or is it something you wanna be a little quieter for? And all of these can constantly be adjusted. But the first step is just to become aware of them and know where are you? Do you talk too loud normally? Or do you kind of, are you very shy? Maybe you're a tech entrepreneur and you're very shy and quiet and you don't talk too loudly, but we don't get the full impact, right? So become aware of where you sit first. Pace, as you maybe notice, I talk very quickly because I get excited, but also I wanna get through all my content, but sometimes it's too fast, right? Sometimes I have to remind myself to slow down and I just think about this slider and I go, okay, Will, you're talking too fast, slow down. You guys with me? You guys understand? I need to slow down for that. But then I can get faster again because I want to get to the next point. Pitch. Pitch is how high or how low you are, right? And again, just think about what these communicate to your audience. If I'm up here talking like this, what do you guys think of me? Hey guys, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a founder, right? Maybe I sound super excited and passionate, but maybe not very professional or experienced or authoritative. And if I'm down here, I say, hello guys, how are you? I, my name is Will, I'm a CEO. Yeah, maybe you think I'm confident and authoritative, but nobody wants to listen to this for too long because it's boring, right? We can't follow that, it's not entertaining. So we also wanna think about what is gonna be interesting if we're giving a performance, if it's a speech, if it's like a musical concert, what will make it interesting to the audience? And that's your speech settings. Uh, clarity, how clear you are being. Uh, for those of you whose English is not your first language, this can be a problem. And I, one thing I've noticed, especially with a lot of speakers of Hindi or other Indian languages is that those are fast spoken languages, right? So when your native language is quick, like Spanish or Italian or Hindi or Arabic, there's a tendency to speak English at the same pace you speak your native language, right? Which makes total sense. That's what you're used to. Those are your habits. But English is slower than a lot of those languages. So you have to actively slow yourself down in order to speak at the normal pace of what um, English is used to and also to speak with more clarity. It's hard to speak with clarity when you're speaking to fast. Uh, but for many of my non-native English speaking clients, clarity is a big one for them. So just pronouncing your words really clearly. And we'll get to that later. The last two I want to talk about are physical expressiveness, how you're moving your body and facial expressiveness. What's going on in the face? Notice, especially in the new COVID world, all we have is this, this little square of the screen that you can see me in. 
You don't know what I'm doing with my feet. I could be wearing pajamas for all you guys know, right? So all you have is this square to tell the whole story. So make sure you get your hands in there. Make sure your body's leaning forward. You don't want to be back here. You also don't want to be like this, right? You want to create a good uh, body language where your screen is and also get those hands in there because this is more exciting than just, hey, everyone. And the facial expressiveness too, right? You have to be more expressive because you're not in person. We don't have that in-person feeling of someone's energy and someone's body language and how they are so you need to kind of project it through the screen uh so yeah so we'll leave that there for now but uh when when i start coaching uh, you all we'll we'll get back to these and we'll see where we fall on these and how we can adjust them and what that does next tell a good story so important that's another thing that happened when we evolved as human beings is we developed an addiction to story so story is what moves us is what makes us remember things it's what's it's what gets our emotions involved and that's who we remember if you say here are the numbers uh, we expect growth rate by 17 percent. we should make a million dollars in quarter four that's just numbers and those are important but they're not the whole picture we need to tell a story around that and in order to tell a story we have to know what moves people I say there are big, five big pain points. Time, money, physical health, mental health, and community. Community is family, you know, neighbors, and friends. So tribe, I say. So think about that. When you are con constructing your story, think about, am I just giving the numbers here or am I telling stories that, that, that reach into people's hearts? Am I solving a physical health problem? Am I solving a stress problem? Am I solving a family issue, right? That's what's going to make people buy and that's going to, is what's going to make investors invest. Nobody invests in a company that is boring and doesn't touch the heartstrings, right? Unless it's a behind the scenes tech solution that nobody cares about anyways. But that's not what you guys do. You guys are passionate about something and you started a company because you noticed a problem and then you have a solution. That's how it all works. And the better you can articulate the problems, the better investors will think you are positioned to solve them and the better customers will feel that you understand them and they'll want to buy from you. So just remember the five big pain points, time, money, health, tribe, and emotional well-being. And my theory is that underneath everything is emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. Under everything else, this is what people want, right? So just important to think about. This is technical, but it's, this is what I call beware of your daily jargon fatigue. Daily jargon fatigue is a term I came up with to describe the words that you say every single day or every single week that are common to your business and you, and that you start to just mumble because you're tired of saying them. It's something the psychologist Steven Pinker calls the curse of knowledge. It's so hard to know that what you know is not in everybody else's heads, right? So you say, hi, my name is Luke I'm a co-founder of our loudspeaker school and we are actors teaching public speakers of communication. And you go, what? Sorry, I didn't hear that. But I say that every day. So my brain and my mouth gets bored of saying those words and I just throw them away and I forget to emphasize them. But these are your most important words. So let's look at what they are. Your name, your title, right? How many people think they say their name super clearly every time they say their own name? Probably none of us, right? Because we're so used to saying it. How many times have you said your name and somebody goes, huh, what? Because you don't say it clearly because you're so tired of saying it. Same thing with your job title. I'm the manager director. No, I'm the managing director. We have to emphasize those. Your company name, right? We say that all the time. So many of my clients, I say, what? I didn't even hear what your company name is because it's daily jargon. You get tired of it. Your tagline, right? For me, it's we are actors teaching public speaking and communication skills. I say that way too fast all the time and I mumble it and I throw it away because I'm bored of it but I have to remind myself to slow down and emphasize my daily jargon. Common expressions, right? If you're talking about funnel metrics, if you're talking about um, you know, all these sorts of things that you talk about, if you talk about health and education, if you talk about wellness and fitness, you know, probably you're gonna be throwing these terms away. So think about what those are for you. Common acronyms, we all know entrepreneurs are, we love acronyms even though they are so bad for communication. So if you're saying SEO, don't say SEO, SEO, no. S-E-O, slow it down and punch it. Because that's also how human beings hear information. If you say S-E-O, we go, oh, oh, I know what that means. But if you go S-E-O, we go, eh, eh, maybe I know what that means, but I'm not really connecting with it. Emphasis equals connection for your audience. Yeah, B2B, that's another big one people always mumble. And also, of course, your long startup B words and phrases, minimum viable product, return on investment, you know, all these things. You have to say them slowly and clearly. 
Good. Now another one. This is how to make them care. Remember we talked about make them understand, make them care. Show them how to feel, right? Everything should not be the same emotion. You need to switch it up. And the very easy way to do this is how you look is how they will feel. So when you're talking about your problems, show that they are real problems. Show some concern and seriousness on your face. But then when you come to the solutions and the potential money that you can make and all the people you can help, smile, right? This is good. So it's something like right now, many people in this country don't have access to drinking water. Show on your face that this is a problem and it's serious and it hurts people and it kills people, right? Show the reality of that. But then say, but my company has developed a solution to this problem. And then smile and don't be afraid to, to get optimistic and be hopeful. These emotions, problems, solutions. This is a problem and it's serious. This is a solution and it's exciting. That's the basic formula for how you can do that. Number uh, five or six, I can't even see that there. Uh, film yourself and watch it. Everybody hates doing this because we hate seeing ourselves on camera, but it's so important for starting to build these skills that I'm, that I'm talking about. Is when you film your own pitch and then watch it back, you'll go, oh, I didn't realize my, my uh, volume was so low. I didn't realize I was speaking so quietly. Or I didn't realize my clarity was, was kind of low and I'm mumbling. Or I didn't realize my pace was so high and I'm speaking way too quickly for people to understand. Or I didn't realize I was, my daily jargon was being mumbled. So film yourself and then watch it back and watch it use these speech settings use what i'm teaching you so that you don't beat yourself up and go oh my god i sound so stupid but just watch it with some kindness and some compassion for yourself and look at the technical elements of what uh, of of your speaking and treat yourself like a like you would an app right just debugging and solving problems and and going oh i can fix that oh i just have to adjust this here and then you'll be very um a lot kinder to yourself uh, and then the last thing we'll do, uh, which is very, very quick, because I'm conscious of our time, but always warm up before you speak. Give a pitch, give a presentation, go into a big meeting, get on Zoom. Right now we're all on Zoom, but of course, eventually we'll, get, we'll go back to face-to-face. Uh, -face. But especially when we're on Zoom, we're in front of the computer all day. We're sitting, we're not using our bodies, we're kind of slouching over, we're disconnected from our lower body and our core. So, warm up. Best way to warm up is come to the edge of your seat and let's all do this now. If your mic is not on mute, I'm gonna ask you to please put yourself on mute just so we don't have all the sound uh, distorting against each other. Uh, and come to the edge of your chair and just sit there. And I want you to take a nice deep breath into your belly. So put both hands on your belly and breathe in. And breathe out. So you should be feeling all of the movement in your belly and not on your chest. If you want, you can put a hand on your chest and breathe in and breathe out. If you feel a lot of movement under your chest hand, then you're creating tension up by your neck. You want to loosen up all of the muscles around your chest and neck and shoulders and breathe into your belly. It's good for your breath and it's good for your uh, calmness. Diaphragmatic breathing. You want to breathe into your diaphragm. So breathe into your belly and out. This is great for calming yourself down if you feel nervous. Next one, we're going to breathe in and make this sound. Mm -hmm. Can everybody do that? Breathe in. Mm -hmm. ah. So this is starting to wake up the vibrating muscles in our mouth and in our chest, all the resonators, which gives us the nice sound. We want our voice to sound resonant and beautiful and powerful and rich, like a musician or a singer. One more time, breathe in. Mm -hmm. ah. Good. And if you find that you can't make a nice long sound, it's probably one of two issues. You're not breathing enough at the beginning or you're letting all the breath go at the end. You're going, hmm, and just kind of releasing everything. You don't want to do that. You want to resonate. You want to feel the vibration in your chest, in your mouth, in your throat. And that's what gives you a nice, rich sound. Good. Next, we want to wake up the face. We want to, your, uh, I talked about facial expressiveness. We want to see your eyebrows and your cheeks and everything going. So we're going to do an exercise called big face, small face. Big face is you're at an airport across the world and you see your best friend from your hometown. So what do you do? You go <gasps> like that and you make a big face. Small face is you're three years old and your mom told you you can't have another cookie. So you go, mm, you squish your face forward. Yeah. So we're going to do big face, small face, back and forth. Ready? Big face, <gasps> small face. Mm. Big face, small face, big face.
Small face, big face, small face, big face, small face, big face, small face, big face, hold it. And good, release. I like to massage my face to wake it up and just to connect with all the facial muscles, which are so good for helping to tell your story. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna, just gonna do some tongue twisters. So the three I like to teach people if they've never done these before are unique New York. So the first one, I'm gonna say it, you repeat. Unique New York, everybody. Unique New York. Beautiful. And what you want to do when you're doing the tongue twisters is over exaggerate the pronunciation because it's like going to the gym for your mouth muscles to make your pronunciation stronger and your words clearer. So, unique New York. Unique, unique New York. Beautiful. Very nice. Next one is red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Beautiful. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Good, and make sure we're saying leather with the TH. Leather, not letter, but leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red, red, leather, red leather, yellow, yellow leather. leather. Good, that's a hard one, eh? And the last one we do to warm up the voice, we're gonna say, how now, brown cow? How oh, now, oh, no, brown, 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 brown now. Good, and use this one is to open the jaw. So we're gonna use this opportunity also to have a nice big uh, voice. So we're gonna go, Breathe in. How now, brown now? How now, brown now? Good. You feel how uh, much more powerful you are when you take a nice deep breath. So we always want to be training the breath and be taking in nice deep breaths. So we're going to do one last one. Make it the loudest sound you've made in one whole week. So you're going to breathe into your belly. How now, brown cow? How now, brown now? Beautiful. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now, everybody is all... Do you guys feel the difference between how much more awake you feel than before? Everybody feel that difference? This is the energy you should have when you go on to Zoom and, you, and you're talking about your company. You're asking for money. You're trying to make a sale. You're trying to connect with somebody. Even just for a coffee chat. Practice this warm-up every time right before it. It just takes three minutes. Just do the breathing. And I'll send, the, I'll send um, uh, uh, an explanation of this warm-up, um, Mandara, so everybody has uh, the, the warm-up written out. But make sure you do this. Just breathe. Activate your voice. Activate your, your mouth muscles. Activate your face. And then you'll be ready to speak with power and clarity and you can make them understand and you can make them care that's what it's all about right that's uh that's it for my uh presentation i want to open it up for questions uh so yeah mandra whenever whenever you're ready um that was fantastic thank you so thank much you. for sharing that uh, we you. have we have questions coming through through the chat window but before mm -hmm. i do that i'm just going to take a 30 second break and welcome all of our guests who might have just joined us recently our guest today is Will Greenblatt of Out Loud Speaker School, and we are speaking about communication skills. Uh, so I'm seeing a number of messages in the chat to share the slides on, yes. on the presentation. We will definitely do that, but it'll be after today, after we view the recording, and we'll set it up on our YouTube channel, and that information will follow for you. So we'll, and I we'll will, just... We'll, uh, sorry, sorry, I will include that warm-up, yes. That's fantastic. And Will, you mentioned, just to recap, you mentioned the golden rule. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned being aware of our speech settings, yes. like pitch, like volume, yes. like inflection. Uh, yes. You talked about telling a good story yes. and wanting to make them understand and make them care. And really at mm -hmm. the core of it is appealing and focusing on the emotional well-being, breathing mm -hmm. techniques, you said yes. filming yourself and warming yes. up. Yes. Now I want to I want to point out the breathing techniques because last week our guests were a personal trainer and a and a psychotherapist and those were exactly the points they mentioned as a way to relieve stress as well. Yes. So do you, do you have the same perspective? Absolutely. So one thing I wasn't able to talk about today because I think it requires a longer conversation and I wanted to focus more on just uh, practical tips that you can kind of get started on right away. But mm -hmm. mindfulness meditation and breathing work, it is so important um, for many, many reasons. Uh, but I'll talk about it just from a communication perspective. The practice of mindfulness meditation, which a lot of it has to do with breathing and breathing techniques, it's good for your mental health, but it also helps you focus your attention. 
When you sit there breathing and w focus on, okay, I'm just focusing on my breath, how my body feels. I'm not thinking about all the things I have to do. You are practicing paying attention to being in the moment, what we call presence. This is like the best thing you can do for being a public speaker because when you're present, you're not thinking, oh, do they like me? Oh, did I include that slide? Oh, I didn't. And then it distracts you and it makes you nervous and self-conscious. But when you are calm and focused and present, you can think of, okay, am I communicating properly? Are you understanding me? Oh, do you have a question? Okay, I can stop. Oh, what are my hands doing? Oh, I can bring them up here and I can start to use them. It gives you this calm self-awareness that is not uh, worried. It's not worried about what people think. It's not worried about, am I doing this properly? Am I okay? But it's just focused and in the moment. And it allows you to pay attention to what your body's doing, pay attention to what your voice is doing, and pay attention to your audience. Are they with me? Are they following me? Do they have a question? Uh, do they look like they need more? Do they look like I've explained it already, right? And so that's why the breathing techniques and the mindfulness meditation are so helpful for communication because it really allows you to be in the moment and focused when you're speaking. So when you say make them understand and make them care, it yes. seems that the, res the responsibility is on us to We're communicate not. our perspective or our point to the other person. Is that correct? Yes. That's why I say make. Yeah, that's, very, that's a very good uh, question. So it is 100% your responsibility as the speaker for the success of the presentation. And I know that sounds maybe daunting, but that is the attitude you need to have, which is, Whatever, whoever this person is, however hostile they are or uninterested or whatever, I have the power to make them understand and make them care. And it is up to me to give them energy, to have some passion in my voice, to prepare enough for my presentation, to make sure I'm speaking from my heart. This is what I love to do. I started my company because I'm passionate about this topic. I really want to help people. I really want to change the world. I really want to make a business out of this idea that I have, right? People respond to that. So if you can just show them how passionate you are and make it clear, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is who I'm helping. These are the problems my customer has. These is how, this is how I solve them. This is how much money it makes. This is my go-to-market strategy, right? But if you're clear about that, but also passionate, I, I've spoken to people who have started the meeting looking at me like this, like they don't want to listen to a word I have to say. And then by the end, they've opened up because they can tell maybe I'm not their favorite person. I don't know. Maybe they don't like my topic or maybe they don't like me. But by the end, they can see, okay, well, at least this guy cares a lot. He's done the work. To make me understand maybe it's not for me but i understand that he really cares and he and at least i get it right so that's that's the that's the responsibility there that's great so audience members our guest today is will greenblatt and may i request all of you to please keep yourself on mute if you're not speaking and please send us your questions in the chat window so will we have a question here yes. um it is this is more about written communications. How do we mm -hmm. grab our clients' attention digitally? Great, uh, great question. So basically, uh, we have to go back to the, um, the pain points and what moves people. Okay. So, okay. and it's a little, it's unfortunate, but in general, human nature is drawn to negativity. So we don't wanna be, I don't believe in spreading negativity in the world. So I don't wanna say put, you know, horrible headlines out there to grab people's attention. That's not what I'm saying. But if you can speak to people's pain in a headline, they will pay attention. So for example, go, if you can speak to their problem, right? So let's say your company makes painkillers, literal painkillers. Mm -hmm. If your headline says, headaches stop you from playing tennis, fix that now. Mm -hmm. You've done something very specific and then anybody who plays tennis or just loves to do something physical or loves to do their hobbies, they'll go, yes, I have a headache and it stops me from doing the things I love. Mm -hmm. Or headaches stop you from being a good mother or father to your kids. Mm -hmm. You read that and you go, oh my God, when I have, that's true. When I have a headache, I feel like I'm a terrible father. I can't be there for my kids. They wanna play and I'm like, oh no, leave me alone. I need to take a nap. And then speaking to their pain and their frustration and their struggles, will get their attention immediately. So I don't want you to be emotionally manipulative or just like, you know, or say something that's not true, but just think about, don't say, hey, I've got a great product here. Everybody says that all day, every day. And you know, how, why would we believe you? But if you can speak to somebody's problem and their pain and, and, and articulate it in a way that they recognize and they relate to, then you have their attention. So you always want to lead with their problems, right? 
So for example, you're an entrepreneur and you struggle with, with uh, stage fright and public speaking. You're really smart at what you do. You're really motivated, but you just can't convince people. Uh, and that's why you're here today, right? So that, that's my job as an entrepreneur. I need to find those people online who, who, feel, um, who feel that they can't express themselves and they can't sell their business with their speaking or their writing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's my, that's how I communicate with my audience for you. Yeah. And I talk about also, yeah, nervousness, mental health. I talk about self-esteem and how people don't always feel confident enough in their self to, to get up on stage or to get on a webinar and tell their story. So that's my pain points that I identify. You have to figure out what are your customers' problems and fears and frustrations and pains, and then speak to that digitally. Okay. Uh, so next question, but before that, I'll give a shout out to the person because they also made a comment on what you were saying. And mm. this is Anju Pasi who said, it's giving, providing empathy to your customers. It's exactly. giving them the year to hear what their problems are. So well, Anju's, very well question, said. Anju's question is how to practice tongue twisters. Could you please speak, mm. speak to that point? Totally. So um, the best place to do it is in the mirror, especially uh, if, if, uh, if, uh, if you're, because Think about this too. So uh, I, I don't know about everybody in the call, but I'm assuming that a, a lot of you uh, have another native language that's not English. And if that's the case, your whole life, you're spent developing the sounds and the tiny little muscular movements of your own language or whatever other languages you speak, right? So those are hours and hours and hours of perfecting the, 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 uh, the movements of that language. But not every language has the same mouth movements. So you need to practice the mouth movements of English. So for the tongue twisters, you also have to look at is your mouth mouth doing uh, uh, the right moves. And sometimes I've had my clients who they can't say a word and then I ask them to do it in front of the mirror and they go, oh, it's because I'm not opening my jaw enough. And once I open my jaw, then I can make the sound. So it'll give you some great information if you practice the tongue twisters. So just brush your teeth. Once you finish brushing your teeth, just stand there and just go red leather, yellow leather and go, am I putting my tongue out? Red leather. Red leather. Oh no, my tongue needs to come out. Leather. And then you can get all this great information about your mouth muscles. And, and you brush your teeth every day. So stand in front of the mirror and just put it into your daily routine. And your mouth muscles will get stronger as you exercise. And remember, exaggerate the pronunciation to get stronger and get better. Don't just say red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. That's not going to help you. You're not going to improve. So just really slow down and emphasize uh, the tongue twisters. And sorry, one more tip on that is also you can do this by reading out loud. So any Facebook article, any newspaper, uh, any book that you love in English, just read it out loud. So Harry Potter was a young wizard. You know, you can just, whatever it is, you can do that and walk around your living room and read it out loud and try to convey the story and try to get into the syllables and the pronunciation. That's like going to the gym for your mouth muscles. So will you speak four very different languages? Do you speak mm -hmm. English and French? You speak yes. Spanish and you speak Mandarin Chinese. Yes. How, how did this help your communication? So much. I mean, I think it also gives me a great understanding of how difficult it can be to understand meaning and how hard you have to work to convey meaning, but mm -hmm. how much you can do with a limited vocabulary as well. Mm -hmm. So what I learned, especially in China, because between English, French, and Spanish, there's a lot of overlap in terms of how the words sound, right? We call these, mm -hmm. in language, we call them cognates, right? I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys know that word, but yeah, cognates. So for example, uh, um, you know, it, it, now of course I can't think of an example, but it's two words that sound similar in, uh, in different language. So for like, in, okay, here's one. In English, association, in French and Spanish, association or association, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. very similar in all three languages. Uh, mm -hmm. But in Chinese, it, it's a completely different word. I can't remember the word uh, in Chinese now, but it's, the, you can't just guess in Chinese. So what I realized is, okay, I have to learn the building blocks of my communication. So I have to think in very simple terms. This is what I want. Uh, at this time, this good, this bad, this mm -hmm. for me, this for you, right? You have to really break down communication into simple terms. And often that's what I teach even my native English speaking clients. I tell mm -hmm. them to give me their pitch and I say, my name, this, my product, mm -hmm. this, my customers, they, these people, we do this for them. Uh, mm -hmm. This good, this bad, right? It's like really like, like, like a caveman, right? Caveman speaking. So like mm -hmm. terrible grammar, simple words, but that is the heart of communication. All mm -hmm. the words you use around that is just to give a little bit of detail, but the main heart of your pitch, should, you should be able to say it in like 20 words, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so, so that's what learning different language is taught me how to communicate with limited vocabulary and also how clear you have to be when, when, uh, when two people speak different languages. But even in your own language, speaking clearly is so much better because people really feel mm -hmm. what you're talking about as well as understand, understand and care, right? So what I'm learning from you is it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mostly, yes. Now, of course, what you say is important. Um, there is a, a model called the Morabian model, which says that only 7% of our communication is our spoken words and the rest is tone mm -hmm. of voice and body language. I think 7% is low because I think it's important mm -hmm. to be uh, clear with your words. But mm -hmm. it is true that the same exact speech could be spoken by Barack Obama or by Mark Zuckerberg and Barack Obama would just be way more successful with it. And Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. would be like, hey, everyone, you know, he's mm -hmm. not a very good speaker. Uh, he's mm -hmm. very successful, but he's not a great speaker. Um, you know, or my prime minister in Canada, Justin Trudeau. He mm -hmm. is a, a very likable guy for a lot of people, but he's not a good public speaker. So a lot of what he says, even if it sounds, even if it's good, people don't like it because of how bad he is at communication. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it's very much about how you say it. Um, uh, one of the questions that's come through, uh, when I, when I want to speak publicly, my mm -hmm. voice becomes or sounds less masculine. How mm. to improve? How to improve that? Uh, I'm assuming this question is from a man. Uh, it is. But e yes, yeah. Uh, so to to sound more masculine, so we think about this is an interesting question because human beings we have uh, what we call biases, right? Mm -hmm. Which are expectations and preconceived notions of how someone is going to sound or should sound or should look, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. most men have lower voices than most women, right? So mm -hmm. to sound more masculine, you can just simply pitch your voice down, right? If we go back to, uh, to the speech settings, you look at mm -hmm. pitch, right now this pitch is at a three. So right now I would say my pitch is at a three, right? Mm -hmm. A two would be this, a one would be this, right? Yeah, but a 10 would be up here. So mm -hmm. if your voice tends to go higher, maybe because you're nervous, that's often what happens. When we're nervous, we stop breathing into our belly when we stop breathing into our belly, we can't access our chest resonator, which is where the deep voice is. And we start, we start breathing up here because we can't access our chest and our torso. So probably what you can do to sound more masculine is breathe into your belly, especially before. Make sure you're taking nice, deep belly breaths. <sighs> and focus on making deep sounds like this, and then you will sound more masculine. But you don't want to sound masculine at the risk of sounding boring, because if you speak mm -hmm. too low, you can sound too boring, right? So mm -hmm. you want both. I say everybody needs variety. Sometimes you want to be up here, but sometimes you need to come down here, right? It should, you should have access to all of it. Uh, but if you feel like you're sounding too high up here, then just focus on breathing and speaking down here in your chest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Will, uh, we've had a few people ask if there are any books or apps that you recommend to mm. help to communicate better. And while yeah. that question was coming through, one of the guests responded, one of the audience responded to say, Brian Tracy's book for public speaking. Oh, so cool. Any, I, I actually any, am not familiar with that one. Any additional suggestions? But... Yeah. Um, so the one I love, so I don't, I don't recommend a lot of books on public speaking, but there is one that I like called Talk Like Ted. Uh, okay. And it's about the TED Talks, how um, how they train their speakers to speak. And that's a good one. It's mostly practical information, just like how to prepare, how to structure, how to use your PowerPoint, how to take the stage, which is good. It, you know, it's helpful. But my take on things tends to be through the psychological look at communication, as you can probably tell. Like, how do we process information? Also, the artistic uh, way of communicating. What what topics make people emotional and how does emotion play a role into what people remember and what people connect to. So those books that I like, one is called The Storytelling Animal by Jonathan okay. Goshaw. And that will tell you all about how human beings evolve to listen to stories and why, why stories are so uh, uh, essential to our, to our existence as a species. That one's really good. Um, also, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari is also all about evolutionary psychology and what stories move people and why people connect to stories and how stories are all around us. Like, you know, money is a story. Uh, countries are a story. Laws are just mm -hmm. a story, right? So mm -hmm. all these kind of things are, I, I, I like to look at that, uh, that angle of things. Uh, and mm -hmm. then there's one for more practical for entrepreneurs. There's a book called The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, which will also help you with the digital side of things. Uh, and that one is really practical practical and simple, how to position yourself, how to reach customers, how to, you know, all that sort of thing. 
And uh, I should add that you mentioned so Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, Homo Sapiens, yeah. which is yes. uh, another book of his is also excellent. But, yes. but really what I'm hearing from you is it's good to read the books, but more than that, it's important to practice and to apply, yes. apply a lot of the tips that are on the screen currently. Totally. And so the reason that I, I don't recommend too many books uh, for my work, I, I recommend like background reading, but yes, it's, it's the important thing is to practice these skills. I'm currently writing a book about how to do all this stuff. So mm -hmm. hopefully there will be a, a good book on these skills one day. Uh, but there also another and, one. And, it's you'd, a little... and you'd want us to read your book. I would love that. Yeah, of course. And I wish I had one to, to plug right now. But um, but another one, if you want to uh, read more about uh, voice, it's just a little mm -hmm. kind of, it's it's written for actors. It's called mm -hmm. Freeing the Natural Voice by Kristen Linklater. Freeing the Natural okay. Voice. So it, it's, it can help you with some of these breathing techniques, these vocal techniques, but it's a little academic. It's for actors to like really get into the anatomy of voice. So it may not be as interesting as, as, as you know, if you're not an actor. So let's let's come back to something oh, sorry. you mentioned. Sorry, uh, an app. There's a great app called uh, Elevate, uh, Elevate, and it helps you with like. Uh, there's a lot of ones about language there, so it can help you with like, uh, you know, cutting down your your not using too many words, uh, finding nice synonyms for words. Uh, uh, there's kind of communication games you can play on there, so that one's pretty okay. good as well. Elevate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's let's speak about warming up and. Mm -hmm and physical presence of body language. Tell us more about that. So, yeah, so basically all actors warm up. If you go to a theater, like a Broadway play or even a small play, if you go backstage before the, the show, all the actors mm -hmm. are not talking to each other. They're, they're focused and they're breathing or they're doing weird, like, you know, movements or weird noises. They're kind of going like, blah, 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 you know, like it's, it's like they look like crazy people because what they're doing is they're focusing their mind and their body and their breath on being present because that is what makes a good performance what we say when we're in the audience of a theater performance is oh my that actor has such great stage presence right you've heard that term stage presence mm -hmm. they're present mm -hmm. and it means that they have focused their mind and their body so much so that they're reacting so naturally and speaking with such uh, conviction and presence and they're connected to the reality of what they're saying and the best way to do that, well, you have to do that in your rehearsals, like by going through your script. So that's another thing I teach. And I just want to touch on this very briefly. I know I'm talking a lot, but um, think about the reality of what you're saying. So if I take it back to the example I gave earlier, if, you're, if your startup is about clean drinking water, if you're saying clean drinking water affects this many people a year, don't just throw out a number there. Those are real people's lives, right? So you have to take a second and we talked about empathy, right? And think about what does it feel like if you do not have clean water to drink? How scary is it uh, if your kids can't get clean drinking water? What is that feeling of literally being thirsty, so thirsty? What is, what is the horribleness of living in a village where you can't access clean drinking water? And it's awful to think about, right? It's really horrible. We don't want to think about those things, but they help you connect to the reality of what you're saying so that when you say it, you're not just going, yeah, 80% of people in this country don't have clean drinking water and it becomes a statistic. But mm -hmm. if you connect to the reality of it, then when you say it, you will actually embody the, the horror and the, and the pain that, that your problem is actually solving. And that is part of what gives you presence. And then part mm -hmm. of what will help you do that is right before you get on the camera and say those words is just thinking, okay, breathing. I'm, what is the reality of what I'm saying? Okay, I did my work in my rehearsal to think about the reality and now I'm just gonna be present. So when I'm saying this thing, I can actually connect to the truth of it and the pain. So will not, not every service or product would affect the human condition or find a solution for human problems where we feel deep em empathy. So how would, you, how would you modify that to when you're finding a software solution? Or yes, great, providing, great, great a, question. providing a service? Great question. Uh, I, would, I would disagree slightly in that I think all solutions do uh, affect the human condition. So it's just about digging and peeling back the layers and finding out, mm -hmm. okay, when, when do they affect the human condition? Mm -hmm. Because nobody will pay for your software solution if it doesn't make their lives better in some way, right? Mm -hmm. So a, a, a B2B enterprise will purchase a software solution if it makes their engineers more productive. Engineers mm -hmm. being more productive makes them happier. Uh, or, sorry, it makes their engineers happier. Happier engineers mm -hmm. are more productive. More productive engineers make more money for the company, mm -hmm. etc. right? So mm -hmm. thinking what that software 
uh, solution does along the line. So a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck in what their solution actually does, but not mm -hmm. who it helps, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you can say, so my software solution allows us to collect data at the point of purchase and then blah, 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 blah. Maybe that's what it does, but nobody cares about that. What they care about is, will this make me more money? Will this mm -hmm. save me hours of time uh, for my, for my uh, uh, full stack developers? Uh, mm -hmm. Will this save on my marketing budget? And then also you have to think about who you're marketing to. It may help the engineers of the company, but you may not be marketing to the engineers. The person deciding mm -hmm. whether or not they're going to pay for your product mm -hmm. could, is the person you have to market towards. So maybe they're an HR person. Maybe if mm -hmm. it's a service-based uh, company, maybe it's an individual founder or an individual mm -hmm. business owner or uh, a, a young mom uh, who just had her first child. Whatever mm -hmm. that is, you have to think about what do they want. So for the software solution, the HR person needs a elegant solution to save time for her company so she can get praise from her manager. Mm -hmm. So your marketing would be like, okay, it's awful when your engineers are burnt out, they're tired, they're miserable, they're, they don't have enough time, and then the whole company suffers. That's the pain you need to speak to. You as an HR manager, you need a solution so they can feel better and you can feel better and your manager can feel better. You need to speak to everybody's pain, right? So mm -hmm. it's not about what the tech actually does, it's about the problems that it solves. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, perfect sense, always yeah. about finding that solution. Exactly. And, and so when you're speaking in your marketing or your, your pitch, obviously you have to explain the product, but don't waste time talking about all the little details of like, oh, and then this piece of code allows us to do this. Mm -hmm. A lot of, especially a software solution, they get stuck in the details of the features. It's not about the mm -hmm. features. We need to know a bit about that, but it's about the benefits. More time, mm -hmm. more money, more happiness, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, early on, you had mentioned that you're open to people giving some role plays to you where they've had a bad situation. So you can talk them through it. Could you just highlight that for our guests so we can get that uh, convers conversation yes. so started? One thing, one thing I love doing is providing a space to coach volunteers in front of everyone else so we can see like in real time how we can improve our speaking skills. And always there's a learning opportunity for the audience to go, oh, that person changed this. I can do that with my own uh, learning. So you don't have to volunteer, but you can still get a lot from this coaching. So I want to open it up. Somebody, you can give me your quick elevator pitch. Just say, hello, my name is this. This is my company and this is what we do. It can just be 15 seconds seconds and that's enough for me to coach you uh, or you can just say I'm having this problem on this sales call and then I can role play and I can pretend to be the customer or I have problems in my investor Q&A scenarios and I can role play as the investor so it's whatever you want to work on but the easiest is just the elevator pitch uh, and so I want to open it up to anyone who wants feedback on their pitch and and I can coach you okay so we'll be we, I put that into the chat window as well and while we're waiting for that the next question for you is um, mm -hmm. We're, we're human. Sometimes yeah. you have a bad, sometimes you have a bad day, but that might be the day we have to make that important business presentation. Yeah. How, how do you get around that and still give your best pitch? Great question. And so I would say it may not be your best pitch mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Think about yourself and your career and your company as a long, 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 long process. This might feel like the most important thing you've ever done. And maybe it is, but there's mm -hmm. no use in thinking like that. Mm -hmm. You just need to give yourself a few exercises. The breathing is a great one, you know, just physical mm -hmm. exercise. Like if you're feeling terrible, just doing some jumping jacks can kind of just give mm -hmm. you a little boost. But in general, the mental side of it is once you've done all you can for your body and your breath and your facial, you know, the warm ups that I taught, that's, that's a good way to get you. Even if you feel like crap, it'll get you ready for your pitch, at least, you know, to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. but uh, convincing yourself that it's okay if you have a bad pitch. It's okay if you have a terrible pitch. Mm -hmm. The light, life is long, you know, the, game, the entrepreneur journey is long and difficult and it's ups mm -hmm. and downs and there's going to be mm -hmm. terrible days, terrible weeks, terrible months, terrible years, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's part of the human experience. And I have found for myself and with all my clients that it, the more you focus on, oh my God, I need to be perfect. I need to make sure that I'm so good today. This is one is so important. The worse it gets. Mm -hmm. Relaxing and just going, this is just another pitch. I just want to make sure they understand and make sure they care. I want to give 100% as much as I can. You know, mm -hmm. for me today, I've done this kind of presentation many, many times, but I still want it to be good because I want everybody to get value from this. But I'm not going to, 
I'm not going to freak out and go, what if it's bad, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this also happens to be early in the morning for me. I don't, I'm, I'm not at my best at 9.30 a.m. I'm way mm -hmm. better in the afternoon, but that's okay. So what I did beforehand mm -hmm. is I just did a bit of warm up, did mm -hmm. my face stuff, you know, had my mm -hmm. coffee and, and relax and go, I might not be the best, best, top, 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 but that's okay. As long as I put some effort into being clear, making them understand, helping people, answering questions, I've done my job. It may not be the best I've ever performed, but that's okay. I, I know that at my baseline, I will still provide some value. And, and that's what mm -hmm. I would uh, urge you to remind yourself. And the last part of that is, um, if you make this stuff a daily practice, then you're mm -hmm. a lot more likely to give a good presentation mm -hmm. on a bad day, because you, you will have some daily training of being a good speaker. So every day you okay. can work on your tongue twisters, you can work on your physical exercises. And then even if you have an off day, at least your baseline is good. And what about filming yourself? Yeah. Is that, just, is that good practice and preparation? Great practice and preparation. And also I would suggest this, this is a whole other uh, presentation, but I would suggest, uh, um, start to put videos of yourself and your ideas and you as a founder out on the internet because mm -hmm. when you film yourself and put it out there you get engagement from people you get reactions you know okay people are connecting with this oh nobody really paid attention to that oh this part of my story is really resonating this part not so much and then you can start to craft an overall story about who are you why did you start this business who do you want to help what kind of services and solutions and tech and, uh, 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 you know, proprietary stuff do you have for them? And the more videos you put out there, the more comfortable you get on camera and the more you realize what lands, what doesn't. So I would say film yourself and watch it. And then once you're comfortable, just take a video. Uh, say, mm -hmm. hello, this is my name. Uh, this is the company. This is my story. This is why I started this company and this is who I'm helping. Uh, follow me if you want to learn tips on uh, running a business, if you want to learn mm -hmm. tips on opening a cafe, if you want to learn tips on fixing bicycles, whatever your thing is, right? Uh, and and uh, just start putting your ideas out there and start thinking mm -hmm. about what are my ideas? Why should mm -hmm. people listen to me? You need to create credibility in the marketplace. You, people mm -hmm. need to know that you know what you're talking about, that you're passionate, that you have solutions mm -hmm. for them, right? So creating mm -hmm. videos and putting them out there is a great way to start to do that. But for now, if you don't feel comfortable with that, make these videos. You can go on Zoom and create a meeting with just you in it, hit record, talk into the camera, and then watch it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do that if you have Zoom. Or you just set your phone up. It doesn't have to look good at first. You just want to film yourself and see what are your speech settings? Are you connecting to the reality? Are you, do, are you, are you showing them how to feel? Uh, you know, do you sound excited and passionate or do you sound really bored and, and like you don't care, right? Just do that as much as possible. And that's a great, great daily training. But, you know, if, honestly, I say if you're making one video a week, you're doing well. So we're, uh, we're nearing the end of our time. So Sorry, yes, let's get some just, volunteers. Just, just to make the most of our next three or four minutes. One, I'm going to remind our guests to please provide us your feedback, feedback in the survey that will be coming very shortly. Um, in second, uh, I'm going to request Will to please mm -hmm. do a quick recap of the key points that you mentioned with uh, uh, mentioned for us, and it could be related to the slide here, or also some of the the examples that you gave in terms of pitch, in terms of the tongue twisters, whatever you think will be really effective for us. And once again, I'd uh, like to thank everyone for attending today, particularly Will for for giving us your time and your energy and your fantastic tips on communication. So over to you. Will. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So the recap is basically this. Your communication skills may not be your favorite part of the job, and it may be kind of scary for you. And I totally get mm -hmm. that. And it still is for me. So what I would say is just, if you work on your technique, which is like your clarity of your words, the way you connect to them, uh, the way your volume and your pace and, and put everything into the service of this is my idea. I care about it. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to tell you about that with clarity and energy. If you put all of your effort into that, the audience will feel it. And so even if you don't say everything in the exact right way, or you forget something, or you're a little nervous, that won't matter because they will feel the passion, they'll feel the effort, and they will, they will really appreciate that. So that's what I would say is just put more effort into your presentations. Don't be afraid to be excited. Don't be afraid to be loud. Don't be afraid to be you know, to have energy and, and, uh, and, just, and just keep working on that. And you know, it's we're all so worried about being unprofessional that we everybody just mm -hmm. goes like this and goes hello mm -hmm. and this is my presentation because we're all trying to be professional screw that don't mm -hmm. don't fall for that it's a trap 
Be excited, mm -hmm. be passionate, be, be enthusiastic. That's what moves people, right? It doesn't matter if mm -hmm. you're talking to Bill Gates or whoever, they're all humans, right? It, mm -hmm. Don't get intimidated by people, just show them your passion. That's what's uh, given me my success uh, and that's what will give you yours. So just really uh, work on that. Uh, and also, if anybody wants to book a free uh, consultation with me where I can look at your pitch and give you feedback, I can provide the link uh, to you, Mandara. Uh, it's, it's, it's a calendar link so they can just click and book something. That'll be fantastic. And I'm um, gonna show the passion. Thank you so much for joining us. Show the volume. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you to all our guests. Have a great Thank weekend, you guys everyone. For coming. Yeah, and sorry we didn't get weeks. to the volunteers, but hopefully I can be back and we can do some coaching. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.